hello all welcome to the nalcon webinar series my name is harshit i'm a part of nalcon team as you know that nalcon conference is a unique platform for security companies and evangelists to showcase their research and technology to the community we have been running nalcon security conference since 2010 uh, where basically information security is discussed in detail among government tech community industry in this work from home environment uh, we keep continue to share our knowledge and connect with our global community by running multiple online events like webinars workshops training resume clinic and others in the coming time we are going to have some exciting sessions uh, on career guidance in cyber security telecom network security ransomware attack and a special workshop on fuzzing technology also we are happy to let you know that we have also announced our nalcon security training uh, it is happening in online edition and uh, it will be scheduled from 23rd of september to 26th of september you can check more details in a chat box now about today's session so today we have with us aditya vasekar and he is going to share uh, with his thought on migrate securely from on prem to azure cloud Aditya is a principal product security engineer at Nuance Communication. He has over nine years of experience and specializes in penetration testing, threat modeling, architecture review. He has been working on providing simple but powerful security solution to architecture design for cloud native applications in the recent past. And he has also spoken at a conference like KuCon and also in our chapters. So on behalf of all of us, I welcome him to this session. Before we go ahead, a few ground rules for the audience. Our today's talk duration is about thirty minutes, and after that, we will have a question answer session. You all can ask your question using a chat option of Zoom. Uh, the question will be answered by the speaker after the talk. And also, I request you to keep your mic mute during the session. So, without any further delay, I request Aditya to take a charge of the session. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Arshit. Um... thank you everyone for joining uh, joining the session mm, let me share my screen quickly okay uh shall we start harshit yeah ditya we can okay yes. good thank you so hello everyone you know uh, thanks again uh, for joining the session i hope you know everyone is okay in the current pandemic you know it's it's pretty hard uh, i know uh so let's let's start you know uh, we have like 30 minutes and there are like a lot of things i i really want to share um mm, so okay um so let's start you know with the with a, with my introduction who am i really uh, like you know harshita has already given uh, an intro uh, over 90 years of experience in information security domain uh, primarily i currently you know i am focusing on cloud native projects uh, for different organizations and help them to uh, secure and achieve the re required compliances you know like high trust hipaa etc so i have also you know being a pen tester uh, i do seasonal you know bug bounty not much but some sometimes uh, whenever i feel uh have presented certain ideas uh, like uh, you know ai ml related stuff on in kukon and other null chapters so uh, i also have you know blogs articles and youtube channel uh, maybe you can go and check sub subscribe to it um you can follow the series as your security on steroids uh i usually talk about you know uh, what are the simple solutions you which you can uh, implement in your um, you know some small projects you know in organizations to secure your applications and you know products so <clears throat> let's start you know how migrating to the cloud really that's that's kind of a question because um, i am starting with this point because uh, i have seen there are you know there are certain organizations uh who really you know it is not required for them but still you know they they go and uh they opt for migrating to the cloud you know because uh i feel sometimes you know you should not go down this line if it is really not not going to happen some somehow because 
uh, there are certain scenarios where you know like if you are handling sensitive data you might not be able to maintain it in cloud because there are like lot and lots of compliances or you know uh, requirements which which you need to fulfill before before going before uh, shifting that kind of data to the cloud uh, then i have seen there are certain organizations there are certain products which they they are having kind of solid architecture you know they can handle uh, the demand scalability you know in a very seamless way then you know it doesn't actually make sense to go into you know cloud just because everyone is moving there shifting there and um, like nowadays you know since the pandemic has hit uh, we know most of the organizations are kind of tight on the budget so so we need to think about it really then there are like lot of legal obligations uh, if you are having certain proprietary systems uh, protocols or softwares uh, those might not be you know uh, compatible with the cloud cloud infra or, you know wherever you want to deploy it so <clears throat> then there is like uh, like now nowadays you know uh, uh, there are certain areas still you know they they might do, they don't have that that kind of connectivity where you can actually go and shift everything to the cloud and you can access and you know so enable everything because latency might play a role in that case there are certain cases <clears throat> for the remote customers remote areas they, there are certain scenarios where you actually cannot do that then uh, risking of downtime that's yeah we say like okay backup or dr those kind of stuff which is there you know sla is also maintained like for 99% but there are certain scenarios where uh, it might it might happen and you might risk uh, uh, certain you know certain processing or you know certain amount of data in that case then uh, you know there there are key things before before we start the migration to the cloud you know for for the cxos to consider you know goals goals needs to be clear you know they need they needs to be crystal clear so nowadays you know many organizations you know the higher management they opt in to move cloud because like like i said you know everyone is moving there there is no specific goal there is no specific agenda or uh, there is no specific vision what they want to do how they want to scale up in the future what are the technologies they are going to use or uh, you know in what direction they want to um, uh, you know move their uh, organization so that's that is something you know the goals needs to be crystal clear the cloud roi return of investment versus the business so you know uh, there are like lot of organizations they fail to calculate you know what is the return of investment if they shift to the cloud and is there really any kind of business requirement around it if your business is going to generate that amount of money or not like i have seen a lot of people talk about okay it is very cost effective and all those things and you know if you shift to the cloud you have to pay whatever you are using it but if you are not using it in a it in a right way then you have to pay much more you know than what what you are actually investing in the on premise so that that might be a case happening then uh, you know customer requirements and compliances uh, there are certain areas countries you know they they kind of forbid you know they kind of don't allow you know uh, to uh, let the data travel across the globe uh, you, you know there are certain rules in gdpr and all those things they kind of restrict uh, the data location wise so you might face uh, cxos might face a challenge where some customers they won't agree uh, you know to move to the cloud and some might actually push you know to uh, adapt the new technologies you know uh, to fulfill the compliance requirements in an easy way such as like you know disaster recovery planning it's uh, backup and dr you know those kind of stuff it's it's pretty much pretty easy uh, using uh, you know cloud platforms so this is kind of a very tricky situation where you have a huge complex product and you you have a variety of customers one customer is saying okay i don't want to go to cloud but another is saying okay just go ahead go to cloud you know let me know what you have in, in your arsenal something like that uh so you know the adoption of cloud trends uh, so um, 
uh, what I have seen is like, you know, the leading uh, platform cloud provider is Azure, almost 57%. I don't know, you know, these exact numbers, but I have, you know, seen somewhat, you know, Azure is leading. Uh, these numbers keep on changing um, all the time. So sometimes, you know, GCP or, you know, AWS is also performing well in some, some cases. Uh, so, but, you know, still, I, I I have seen like a lot of sites. They they are saying like, okay, Azure is kind of leading. Uh, then <clears throat> let's see, you know, what kind of benefits we are looking at if we we connect with Azure. Uh, so, you know, personally, I like Azure because uh, they they kind of you know provide a lot of uh, it. They kind of come with a, a suit. Uh, you don't have to look anything uh, out of uh, outside of that out of that um so you know everything you you can procure you know everything process everything in in the uh, given environment you don't have to you know worry much so the depth of the services what they have provided it's 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 very good okay then uh, integration with devops and overall delivery strategy so you know the azure devops the uh, you know uh, the speed the agility what they they are providing you know uh, again uh, github uh, is also kind of you know uh, taken by microsoft so they are um, so all these things coming into a picture it's it's really powerful you know there are like a lot of things that you can do uh, in at one go then the data protection uh, i have seen like you know they are compliant with almost all the standards uh, available um, you know in the world i i haven't seen like okay um, azure is not compliant to any specific standard or you know uh, requirement whatever it is coming so they are almost certified by everything HIPAA, high trust and everything. Uh, so they have proper controls in place, but you know, the responsibility again lies uh, with them as well as with the customer. So it needs to be enabled accordingly. Then, you know, number of storage options and integration with other software defined solutions, it's, it's enormous. You know, they, uh, the integration option they are giving, they are providing, it's, it's pretty good. And that that's a pretty much a good amount of number they are they are providing then uh, deep segregation of resources and data uh, so uh, the roles responsibilities and you know uh, uh, the uh, i would say uh, the granularity for the rules what they have provided uh, within within azure it's it's really good uh, <clears throat> like i said you know maximum security and compliance uh, they are they are having then cost effective uh, if used correctly uh, it's it's pretty important stuff because I, i'll i'll show you one i'll tell you one example later you know in the slides what what happens if if you are not uh, effectively using it what what do you might face then the sla around is you know 99.9% so this number is you know if you look at it it's pretty like almost uh, near to the 100 but it comes with the uh, price okay because you need to uh, purchase uh, certain um, i would say uh, type of vms or you know databases and all those services you need to upgrade to certain subscriptions so that you know uh, azure will uh, comply with this sla then uh, when you start, you know, uh, before migration, uh, you need to really understand what kind of complexities you are looking at. So this is just a, you know, uh, trend um, I, I was, you know, following. What are the biggest challenges when, when you adopt the cloud? So you can see the biggest challenges like, you know, complexity around, around the security. Uh, this is, this, in this case, you can see like cost is their legacy in the infrastructure. Challenges around GRC, you know, governance, risk and compliance, legacy applications, other services, challenges around data locality and isolation, corporate executive sponsorships. But the biggest one is around security because, uh, because people, you know, in an organization, they are like bound to, uh, you know, for, follow certain things. There are very few people, they, they embarrass the changes very pretty quickly. And uh, in that case, you know, the, training, uh, the mentality, you know, all, all those things come into play. So 
uh, when we say there, there are like you know a lot of organizations managers they they say like okay we just need to do lift and shift but that's that's really not the case when when you say lift and shift that's actually like you know uh, you cannot uh, uh, <clears throat> copy the vm from the on premise and you know place it to place it into the azure uh, there are like a lot of controls you need to implement a um, lot of things you need to uh, configure there if those are not done properly then you know how the apis get exposed how the things you know uh, go in a wrong direction uh, so you know let's see some common cloud migration models uh, like i said you know lift and shift is one of uh, one of them first one where uh, there are like a lot of orgs organizations where you know they are pretty much in hurry for some of the projects and uh, they just want to get out of the data center or you know their their on premise infrastructure in that case lift and shift can be like <clears throat> that can be a possible uh, model i would say where um, uh, so they, there are certain you know compliance requirements where you know you need to have bcp dr and all those things so in that case if you you know uh, if you go for the proper subscription and you know um, you, you can actually uh, comply with this bcpdr it's it's kind of a big thing you if you are managing your own data center then it's it's like you know multiplying your data centers across different locations it's it's pretty hard to you know, manage <clears throat> so in 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 cloud adoption it's pretty easy uh, like the third point is only limit to pay what do you use and uh, that's some at you know at some point you need to configure what what exactly how to use it then uh, shifting to saas so shifting to saas is something like you know um, uh, the the uh, within an big organization there are like lot of applications right like email and uh, your payroll hr operations all those things they those can be shifted to the to the uh, to the saas offering what what uh, you know different organizations are providing so you don't have to worry about okay how you need to manage your email servers how to secure them how you know um, you know increase the space and all those things it was really i i remember you know they they um you know from my previous early days like the mailboxes used to flood out and you know we need to request it and get extra space and all those things those that was a nightmare so those kind of stuff uh, you know it's pretty easy uh, using the saas offerings then uh, restructuring the application so in this case the goal is to achieve certain abilities of cloud like you know speed agility and security controls uh, becoming the global provider for business solution with scaling so in this case you have a very small product uh, on premise uh, where you are not able to scale uh, scale properly based on the demand so if you move move it to the cloud restructure it properly you know architect it properly you might able to you know uh, reach lot of uh, you know customers across the globe you know use kubernetes clusters it's like you know you can auto scale lot of thing and down scale whenever it is not required <clears throat> uh the new platform there are like lot of you know big uh, uh, big organizations players uh, in this business where uh, they they utilize this you know cloud platform like for their own critical it functions so for example there are like lot of medical industries so they are using lot of analytical stuff from the azure for their uh, you know uh, for 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 their own purpose um, and they are kind of uh, looking at the market which is going to come you know they are kind of future ready Uh, for for those kind of opportunities so in that case uh, they actually work with uh, the cloud providers and they uh, they suggest certain things to the to the cloud providers like do this do that and you know we we might comply this and that so those those kind of stuff then uh, yeah let's let's see you know common mistakes uh, what what uh, what can go wrong during the migration so <clears throat> uh there are like lot of organization due to you know uh, certain um, gaps in the maturity they actually fail to gather appropriate security requirements because there are there is no proper structure within the organization in that case so uh, if you don't have security requirements with you then 
what kind of analysis you are going to do you know what kind of services you are going to procure from the you know, from, you know, from the cloud uh, cloud provider um, there is no way you are going to you know shift your data securely uh, there are like a lot of cases where <clears throat> uh, the you know the it people they started taking backups on you know unsecure media and uh, due to certain power failures or you know uh, or you know a lot of unknown stuff the <clears throat> the backup what whatever it was taken it was either corrupted crashed you know it was like missing all those things are kind of they they were happened so there needs to be a proper standard uh, proper you know security framework that should be followed within the organization like fips nest there are like a lot of them whatever which is nearby you know to to the required customer compliances it should be followed so how to avoid it uh, consult with the product security teams and documented with proper traceability so the traceability is very important here because you get the requirements you need to work on that you need to architect it accordingly you need to implement those requirements you need to test them uh, you need to see okay actually those requirements are you know implemented or not and you need to document uh, because moving further um, uh, you know those requ those documentation the, that kind of documentation might be required uh, by by customer or you know certain governing uh, governing uh, firms uh, <clears throat> next is like you know inefficient architecture uh, so so you know inefficient architecture like uh, the architectural efficiency issues due to the complexity of the products we know like there are like a lot of products you know applications in the market there are very complex um, and you know time time given to prepare the strategy for shifting to cloud with existing infra, infra again that's an issue so uh, i have seen you know people like you know a certain higher management pushing you know people like okay we need to go in in cloud like okay six months i don't know we need to go there but uh, with the complexity of the product it's it's really a challenge for for the you know for the management the the architects and you know the uh, operations guys <clears throat> because you have a huge amount of data huge complex you know uh, product uh, which is sitting there on uh, you know in your premises and um, you need to map those services with the cloud provider you need to assess if cloud provider is really ha really having that or not then it's it's really a nightmare uh, to come finish that within like you know this this kind of time so how to avoid basically it is like you know build a team of specialist uh, audit the existing infra and based on that you know resolve the technical depth so what is the technical depth like, like you know uh, if you're product is not having a granular granular authorization you know implemented uh, there are no rules or you know there is no fine grained uh, segregation of rules uh, in your product then that's kind of a technical depth you know that's kind of security risk which all, you already know and if you are moving to cloud you are investing you are going to invest certain amount of time resources everything then you need to make sure uh, you utilize the fullest capability what is provided by the cloud so in that case you can actually go and you know create a lot of rules and uh, you know uh, uh, remove this uh, death actually then you can minimize the inconsistencies um, operational issues uh, with different systems and you you need to create solid documentation uh, around it because uh, you need to be sure like okay you have like module a and module b if they are not you know if you're not able to integrate them properly uh, then those might create some some issues going further so you need to design your architecture accordingly <clears throat> so okay so next is the cost um, so most of the organization they lose track for the money what they spend uh, for resources procured so uh, i'll tell you what what organizations are doing they uh, they randomly you know they select okay uh, some certain cloud provider they try to do some kind of pocs there and you know people start liking it okay because it's it's pretty much efficient you can connect from anywhere you can uh, give access you know you can fine grain the ro uh, rules and responsibilities you can share them you can uh, there are like a lot of stuff you can do within azure so 
i came across a incident where you know uh, the data which was used for the poc uh, that that was like you know uh, the actual production data people were you know people were playing with that and uh they were using azure data factory you know for certain certain uh, certain kind of processing and then uh they used to run that you know data factory uh, for certain uh, um, uh what i can say a uh, process you know to to achieve something that data factory used to run for like you know 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours uh, sometimes like uh, up to 12 hours and uh, that created like at the end of the month um you know when and the manager so it actually cost somewhere around like 60 70000 dollars you know they the, there was a bill generated from from the cloud provider so so these kind of things happen if if uh, you know if the resources are not properly uh, you know monitored or you know uh, you need to keep a track of you know based on the analytics whatever it is provided most of the cloud providers they provide it uh, on they have proper dashboards and everything otherwise there are like a lot of third party uh vendors you can actually go and use them for doing the analytics <clears throat> uh then uh like you know specifically azure i know uh, there are certain hosting regions uh, low cost where you can actually use those regions where the resources are somewhat cheaper uh if it's the poc you can do that and uh, if you're using the test data then it should not be uh, having an issue um then you know you need to optimize the architecture by using some resources as like you know managed services you can use the same resource for your development environment your test environment or you know your uat um, like you know um resources like azure key vault that can be shared you know within three different uh, environments that that can be that that can save some money there okay then you know uh, like security misconfigs uh, this is like an endless topic but i just try to you know list down some of the uh, huge ones i would say data loss due to improper or inadequate backups of storage you know from on premise to and unsecured device so um so you know shifting the data from the on premise to cloud again that's that's a huge headache actually if you have, if you are having some some sensitive data then you know apis exposed to the internet uh, unwanted ports and services open to internet default credentials used insufficient logging and monitoring for the resources so how to avoid like you know these are certain take appropriate backups you you need to make sure like there are certain services by azure like you know azure data box that's that's a you know new service what i have seen it's it's pretty interesting service uh, they are you know kind of compliant with with the you know whatever uh, the requ uh, compliance requirements we have um, so they provide you know small device like you know they they provide i think from 50 gb to i think in some tbs or you know they they provide it so uh, they can send those devices to your on premise <clears throat> and they uh, kind of ship it securely to uh, to the you know nearest data centers and they they can do the copies and all those things it's it's pretty interesting uh, service then uh, you can actually restrict the apis by you know properly implementing authentication and authorization controls um, azure ad is pretty powerful uh, which gives a lot of things uh, you know uh, in our scenario to use then uh, locking down the perimeter with firewall nsgs and asgs these are pretty uh, you know interesting uh, uh, controls uh, by by azure you can act nsgs is nothing but the network security group and asg is application security group so you can actually group the uh, you can actually uh, you can actually group the application resources into one uh, by using these you know asgs so uh it's like firewall within a firewall so something like that so you can actually create the segregation within the network uh you don't have to uh you don't have to worry about uh, uh, you know how uh, if it is a flat network or how it is then you know change the default configs uh, these are like uh, azure provides all the security baselines uh, for every resource uh, best practices also you can follow the documentation they are pretty much easy to follow then enable auditing and logging for all resources and centralize the logs 
so this is a pretty important point uh, many people you know they they don't do it in a proper way so for enabling whenever you able the auditing and logging for any resource you need to make sure like you are uh, centralizing those logs if you are collecting all the logs and sending it to different workspaces then it might it might not give you a proper analytical uh, uh, view you cannot analyze those logs okay so you need to make sure like you are centralizing all those logs so you know uh, there is a utility azure migrate for you know migrating your stuff you know to azure so there are like uh different utilities within that uh that can be actually helpful uh if you plan it it's a, it in a very proper way so you know uh i'll just you know give an intro to this uh discovery and assessment this will like you know uh, discover and assess uh, the servers uh within your premise whatever it is like you know sql vmware vms hyper-v etc physical servers those will be you know assessed discovered and assessed by by the azure migrate then the server migration uh you can directly you know migrate the servers uh these you know uh, vmware hyper-v physical servers um, all those things you know you can uh, it has you know pretty uh, a big huge coverage for this uh, then there is a data migration assistant this specifically assesses the sql server database for migration uh, to the azure sql db sql managed instances or you know azure vms running sql servers so uh, this is a pretty you know powerful utility data migration assess uh, assistant it will actually assess the your current configuration and it actually you know suggests a lot of things okay this is what it is missing on your on-premise uh, configuration this is what you can do and it also includes you know the security controls so for example you know uh, enabling encryption at rest uh, there is a control like td transparent uh, data encryption uh, which encrypts the data on on uh, at rest so <clears throat> Then there is a, a Azure database migration service where migrate on-premise databases to you know Azure VMs running, um, uh, you know SQL Server. Same, you know it's it's related to uh, the SQL uh, databases only. Then there is Mover. Uh, these assess uh, this this assesses the servers. Actually, it was acquired by Microsoft. Uh, this is uh, this again uh, another powerful utility uh, that will go and assess your um, you know web servers, web applications, and all those things. Then uh, there is a web app migration assessment uh, assistant. Uh, it will assess your uh, you know web app related uh, infra uh, from the from the on premise and it will actually map uh, wherever like for for example there was a case where uh, there was a, a web server um, then uh, which was hosting a web application then there was a database connected to it uh, when uh, the web app migration assistant ran it actually you know provided a, a different solution like you can use uh, you know different app functions you know azure functions where you can automate a lot of stuff you don't have to uh, they it actually you know suggested some serverless uh, solutions as well and that actually uh, saved a lot of cost for for that organization so uh, these kind of things that are kind of possible uh, using web app migration assistant then uh, at last you know azure data box uh, migrate offline data um, I talked about this, you know, it is a pretty interesting service. They, uh, it was for preview for a lot of, you know, for some time now it is available and it's a pretty power, pretty much powerful uh, service. Even for the personal use, you can check it out. It's, it's a, uh, it's a pretty good service. Then uh, this is, this is pretty important slide, you know, controls provided by Azure, uh, the identity management. So the first is the identity management. You can use Azure AD for you know central identity and authentication. You can create service principles. You can use the managed identity uh, to define the rules, <clears throat> uh, to you know to configure uh, what what kind of uh, privilege you can give to different different roles uh, within the application. Then. Uh, the, you can uh, use SSO, MFAs, passwordless, you know, services. There are like a lot of different services. They, those are supported by Azure. Then logging and monitoring, uh, you can actually, 
So during migration, it is really important. Uh, you need to flag out uh, the admin accounts. You know those those users who are having uh, higher privileges in the in environment because it might happen like you know uh, you need to keep track of them. What kind of changes they are doing? What kind of you know access they are having to to different resources? So those should be logged and monitored all the time. Uh, then there is a privileged access. Uh, like I said, you know. Um, restricting admin access to critical business functions uh, reviewing the user access all the time you know uh, like for a year or so uh, you should be reviewing all the users you know access uh, what kind of uh, what level of privileges are given are those really required utilized by those users or not then emergency access to the ad active directory actually um, there were cases where you know admins were kind of locked out from from the active directory and in that case uh, in that case you know kind of a break the glass kind of situation you you would be using the emergency access to the ad and that needs to be again monitored all the time uh, <clears throat> automate the uh, entitlement uh, so uh, creating users giving permissions roles and permissions some you know up to some extent that should be automated it should not be like you know there should not be much of the human intervention there to you know avoid certain um uh you know accidents where you know providing um all the privileges to the uh, users and all those things then data protection uh, use you can uh, use azure rollback access control uh, using you know service principles managed identities those can be those can be used uh, pretty in a very pretty much easy way network access asgs nsgs uh, those can be utilized in this case then encrypting the data uh, all the data storage is provided by azure they kind of have these kind of controls like you know you can enable TD, uh, you can enable ATP, you, which can detect a lot of things. Encryption of data at rest, uh, like I said. Uh, then asset management. Uh, this is a pretty important stuff because um, security teams, uh, they should be aware uh, what kind of resources you uh, are going to be uh, you know, provisioned in the cloud. So there should be a proper visibility given to the teams. Uh, there should be proper, you know, approved resources. Only those those should be provisioned in the in the cloud. Uh, logging and threat detection. Uh, so this this we have already talked about. So the new thing here is uh, <clears throat> Azure is providing, you know, Azure Security Center and uh, Azure Sentinel, where these these two resources uh, Sentinel is somewhere related to the SIM. Uh, kind of a sim solution provided by azure and azure security center is like you know centralized dashboard where uh, you might get all the uh, alerts related to the resources which are provisioned in the infrastructure uh, then incident response uh, you can utilize uh, azure security center and sentinel uh, in this case if there are any incident but uh, your organization should be having a proper incident response uh, process, uh, you know, established. Then uh, posture and vulnerability management in this case, uh, like pen testing and red teaming, uh, that should be carried out by third party vendors or, you know, we are pen testing teams. Then governance and strategy, this is a pretty big domain where <clears throat> It covers all the asset management, data protection, roles and responsibilities and ownership because uh, there are certain governing bodies, government, you know, governments, they might be <clears throat> asking for this particular document where uh, you need to, you need to prove that um, certain users from the organization, they are not having access to the patient data, PHI data, or, you know, sensitive data, medical records of you know of the customer those kind of things should be uh, needs to be documented in a very proper way then network security strategy uh, how the network will be placed what kind of perimeter how the perimeter is being set all those documentations um, you know those, those are kind of required by the governing bodies 
logging and threat response strategy how uh, how the logs are getting you know uh, saved if you go if you follow the hipaa requirement for audit logs then it's a pretty extensively you know in the latest revision they have written in a pretty extensive way what kind of audit logs um, are required you know to comply uh, to certify uh, the audit log requirement then you know there are few examples where you know uh, how these you know uh, these companies they have shifted like uh, shopify you know uh, they shifted you know cloud to cloud migration was done shopify was like having their own uh, you know kind of maintaining their own data center and kind of their own private cloud but now they shifted to the gcp um, the motive was to achieve you know efficiency and scalability you know Shopify is a pretty big shop, I would say. Uh, there are like a lot of businesses they they are supporting, so scalability is pretty important because there are certain vendors who depend on the shop Shopify, and uh, they have to scale up like you know within twenty minutes all the products are kind of getting sold out. There are certain um, uh, what I can say there are certain uh, sites who use up to that extent. Then there is Spotify. Um, they were actually on the like you know hardware to cloud. It was shift, they shifted to again GCP. Uh, so the really interesting thing uh, they took around two years, you know, as uh, to, for the assessment and decide. Uh, they you know uh, at the end of the like two years they decided to split the effort. So how they decided to split the effort is uh, initially they uh, they actually move. Uh, you know, started moving their uh, services related things to the cloud and then, you know, the operations related to the cloud. So uh, the actual decision was taken because uh, the goal was, you know, to they wanted to free up their engineers for future innovations. That, that was the primary goal. Then uh, Evernote, you know, hardware to cloud shifted to GCP again. So uh, the interesting thing was like, you know, uh, uh, they built an interactive migration you know uh, they did it like in a very interactive way um, uh, to do a efficient migration because they were having something like 7 million nodes with with certain you know attachments to that so they they did it something like um, 60 70 days something and that was the span they they actually shifted then there is Boeing um, shifted to Azure for you know their fuel optimization plans and related analytics. So they they actually they are working on a lot of different AI ML related stuff where uh, they actually want to optim optimize you know the fuel cons consumptions by the planes. Then <clears throat> BMW you know shifted to Azure for many their um, for you know maintaining their on premise operations. Uh, there are certain IoT devices they uh, they manage through that. So you know for for the efficiency and scaling again, uh, they, their this was the their primary goal in this case. So uh, I think the time is up. Um, if you have any questions related to the migration, maybe. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Aditya, uh, for this really amazing and uh, I must say in-depth view of uh, migration of process of, from on to cloud. And hello all, if you have any question, I request you to please type it in the chat box. Uh, Aditya will answer that. So yeah, till we get a question, I have one question and it is not a technical question, but a general question. So uh, can we save money by moving uh, on-premises operations to the cloud as an organization? Uh, yes, uh, you know, you can save a lot of cost, but like I said, um, you need to configure it. You need to architect it properly. Um, in that way, you can actually save a lot of money in that case, yes. Okay. Okay, I yeah, think... look like uh, it was so in depth uh, preview that we don't have any questions, but yeah, thank you Aditya, again. So, thank you everyone for your participation in today's webinar session. And we have our next webinar session on uh, charting career paths in cybersecurity by Bisha Kajain, and that is scheduled on 6th of August. 
So hope to see you all there. And thank you. Take care till then. Thank you.